What's up guys, welcome back. Now if you saw my previous video, we did a preparation before a paint correction. Now I know I talked about taping in that previous video, so I just wanted to take a couple minutes here if even that, and talk about taping at the beginning of this video. I have the Porsche, the 911 here, all taped off pretty much for the most part. There's a couple pieces left to do, but I wanted to stop and show this to you and explain to you kind of why I'm doing it, why we tape everything off the way we do. So we'll start with the front end here. As you guys can see, the front end's pretty much taped off. It looks uh, kind of funny, actually. So um, the tape here, we got the emblem all taped off, the headlights fully taped off, part of the Fog light here, now I could tape the rest off here, but there's nothing but gills here and kind of the grill, so we're not gonna be coming close to that near polisher. The whole point of taping all this off is so when you're polishing the area around, let's say, plastics or chrome or anything like that, is to protect the pad from coming over top of that, because what's gonna happen is you're not gonna stop right on this line. If you do, you're probably gonna end up stopping a little short of this when you're polishing, so you kind of overlap. That's just the tendency when polishing, so you're gonna be kind of working around like this. Now, most people just usually tape off just the outer rim on Porsches, especially 911s. The way that their headlights are kind of shaped, you can see that your pad's pretty much gonna be hitting a lot of that. So just to be safe, I like to tape this all off. Uh, you got the side markers taped off as well. We have part of the side mirror here, so the arms in here, it's not the prettiest of tape jobs, but you get the idea, you know, down here against the door, and then you have part of the windshield coming up over here. So this right here is kind of piano black, so this will get polished, and then this is glass. So we have to tape off a piece right across here yet, and then you can see it's taped off here when we're working the A-pillar. So that's kind of blocked off here, so you're not, you know, polishing and into the glass, getting any contaminants there. And then this is all chrome. So this is all chrome that's taped off specifically for when you're working in these tight areas. Now, I'm gonna be using a smaller machine, like a three inch pad for this area, but you're still gonna have that overlapping pattern. So take the time, you know, this probably took me about an hour and a half, two hours to tape most of this off. Uh, the only thing back here yet to do is to tape off the emblems. Now, normally we could take these off, but depending on the customer, they may bring you emblems that just they just say take them off. But I have some really, really thin kamikaze tape similar to this, and we'll just go through and tape off the best we can. And obviously, we'll be working through with a small pad through here. But license plate's got to come off yet, and then you'll see here the tail lights are taped off similar, um, especially for right in this area. You know, right here, the pad might not hit, you know, because this tail light's recessed a little bit. But, you know, working through this area, and especially right in here, the pad kind of bumping into that, we just want to be careful and take precautions. So, the car's all taped off here. I'm going to get started on the hood. I'm going to start with a test panel, as always. I've preached about this before. Uh, I'm going to pick a little kind of spot, probably right about here. Or I might even pick a spot that's less noticeable, so we might even start kind of down here on the side. Um, I'll make that call here shortly, but... Just do a little test panel to make sure my theory, the products that I want to use are going to work. I don't want to start super aggressive. If you start super aggressive and you just take off a bunch of clear coat right off the bat when you don't need to, well, you don't need to do that. I want to take off the least amount of clear coat and get the best cut. So polishing is always a balancing game, right? Of chopping down that clear coat while leaving some still there to try to get perfection without totally pulling off all that clear. So I'm gonna do a test panel. I'm gonna start with a Rupes yellow foam pad and my favorite Sonax Perfect Finish. I think that'll probably work out really well in here. Porsches, at least in my experience, notoriously have soft paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a test panel. Again, you guys don't really need to see, but I don't have to pinpoint a big little spotlight on here, but you can just see through the working lights, all the swirls in there. So this paint is going to be beautiful when it's done. I can't wait to see how it turns out. So uh, without further ado, let me get polishing. So you guys have seen me do this before. So this is new pad, got it all primed up. So kind of just get the whole pad covered up here. Got a little bit on the edge left to do. And then we're going to do tiny amount of dots. And then from there, we don't have to re-prime it, but you want to make sure this whole thing's coated again. So I just spray a bunch of product on there and kind of massage it in the pad. And you're doing this to get the pad prepped and seasoned for polishing. So of course, naturally, I eat my words saying that most of the Porsches, in fact, all the Porsches that I've ever worked on have been fairly uh, soft paint. Well, this is the first 991 that I've done. I've done some 997s, some older Boxers, uh, some older Caymans. And uh, this paint's actually pretty, pretty hard. It's definitely not as soft. So here's the results after Sonax Perfect Finish on a yellow Rupes pad. Now you'll probably see 
the clarity's back. I mean, you can tell the difference like that. You see the kind of the milky haze. You can see the line right here where I stopped. But we're going to definitely step up to a level three, especially on the hood with how big this is and how the surface area is. But the level three, we're going to go through and do a microfiber cutting pad and then come through and do a finishing pad. And hopefully that'll take care of all the swirls and definitely get this paint looking uh, up to par again. Now see, the results on this are much better. This is just one pass with the microfiber pad and Jeskar correcting compound. This stuff's awesome. Uh, similar to Sonax, I love this stuff. I'll put a link below, but the Jeskar correcting compound, kind of similar how it behaves to Meguiar's M100 oil-based. Um, kind of, It just it works really, really well if you guys haven't tried it as a cutting compound on a microfiber pad. I uh, use Meguiar's microfiber pad. Um, I'll link all that below as well, but um, it's good stuff. But check this out. Much better. So here's old. So I just did this little square here, but uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, much better. So here's over here. You can see all the haze, all the swirling. Come over here, turn the light up just a little bit. I'm happy with that. So now we're gonna go do the whole car. It's gonna be a little longer on this job, but um, you know, I kind of aim for perfection here and uh, I think the client's gonna be very, very happy with this. Here you guys go. Hood is done. Came out really nice. This color just pops and it's gonna be tough for it to come out on camera. It's almost like showing up as like a purple hue to it on camera, but it's more of like a blue gray slate. I mean, if I turn it off, eh, you can kind of see it, but look how nice that hood is now. So we got the rest of the car to do. I'll keep you guys posted. I mean, I mean, seriously guys, this paint, oh man, what did I tell you? Look at that. With a coating on here, I'm telling you, this paint is gonna be awesome. Now, I know my client's watching this and he's gonna see this on video, but I promise you, buddy, just wait till you see this in person. This color is is up there for me. And it's, it's weird because it's not this flashy, crazy color. It's not this huge, you know, flamboyant orange over there. It's, it's just this subtle blue and just bringing out the haze and pulling that haze off of here. Uh, I can't wait. So I have the front bumper left to do. I usually wait and do the bumpers last just because they're usually the most intricate, the most pain in the butt. So I'm going to continue to work my way back. Uh, probably do the A pillars next, um, but this will be a good one guys for sure. That about wraps it up for the polishing on this car. The color came out great. I just have to clean up my mess. Again, the products that I used, Jeskar Correcting Compound and Jeskar Finishing Compound, um, I'll link them in the description below. The Correcting Compound, I used Meguiar's Microfiber Cutting Pad, and then for the Finishing Compound to come bring that gloss back out, used a foam pad. It didn't really fill much of the polishing stage. It's the same kind of process. You're essentially doing the car twice. So um, the car's all done. Obviously, it's a little dusty. Not sure if you guys can see that all in the glass there, but we'll get that all blown off. Get all the tape pulled off here. I have to go through now and go ahead and fill in some of these rock chips on here. There's a couple here. 
couple up top here and a bunch down here. Now, I don't have my big camera here, but I wanted to show you this uh, regarding the touch-up paint. So what I'm doing is I'm using this pen here. Hopefully you guys can see this. And I'm just going around like literally tediously one by one and kind of just dabbing on all the, the, the paint here uh, and all the stone chips. So let me flip the camera around and I'll show you here. So this thing's amazing. I'll link it below, but you just put some of your touch-up paint right in there. And you see all these chips, you just dab away like so. Makes it so much easier to uh, do rock chips, especially if there's a ton. So. Uh, Check this out. Last time Larry Casillo did a, a video on this on his channel, Ammo NYC, uh, this thing sold out and like the price skyrocketed. So I have a link below, but I'm telling you, this is a life changer for touch up paint. No more toothpicks, no more brushes. Uh, I swear to you guys buy this. That's it for my little tech tip today. This color came out great. It's exactly what I expected it to come out as. It's night and day difference. Uh, it's definitely not as gray, hazy. There's definitely some more pop in it, some more blue, but the real treat's gonna be when we put the coating on there. So I can't wait to see here the next couple days when the paint protection film's on there and we do the rest of the car and we coat it, it's gonna look fire. So I can't wait to see it. I wanted to bring you guys along in this video. I've done countless videos on paint correcting, but you guys keep asking for more. So I wanted to bring you along on this one. If you have any questions, check out all the links below for the products that I've used. And uh, if you guys like this video, big thumbs up, give it a like. Click that red subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one.